Hey guys, um, welcome back again. Uh, so today we're going to um, continue our lecture on evolution and what it has to do with well, our class and what it has to do with um, life here on Earth. Okay, So I'm just going to kind of come back over here. I'm not going to go over or review over the stuff we went last time. Last time we kind of covered some guys that kind of played into evolution before the individual who we're going to talk about today, who is Charles Darwin. Okay, Charles Darwin is notably the man who came up with the idea of uh, evolution. And if you guys watched that video that I gave you and do the assignment, you know that there was another dude who almost beat him to it, who came up with the same idea, and they seemed to correlate with one another. So they had to, they both came to the same conclusion about the world and where species come from. So basically, Charles Darwin um, did most of his discoveries uh, in the uh, Galapagos Islands. Uh, which is a small chain of 16 islands off on the, let's see here, northwest corner of South America. Um, when he went there, he noticed it had some varying climates from island to island, and that every island had its own unique um, species or animals. For example, some islands had tortoises, uh, some islands had iguanas, some islands had finches, some islands had so many different types of plants, and they were very unique to each island, even though they were so closely um, by each other. Um, basically what ended up happening, give you a quick history lesson, um, back in 1831, um, uh, they set sail, um, and the captain, Robert Fitzroy, wanted Darwin to come with because he wanted a naturalist with him. Now, a naturalist back then was basically a poor man scientist, essentially. They was just more or less a collector. And again, if you watched that video, that's pretty much what Darwin was doing, was just collecting random crap and then making uh, assumptions and views about them later. Okay? Um, that sort of thing. Um, but um, Darwin, what main thing that he liked seeing the most, and again, I'm referring back to that video a lot, was the tortoises. He liked them a lot. He um, rode on one, and uh, he noticed that they seemed to differ from island to island in terms of shell, and he was kind of thinking about it, but the thing that gave him the, the aha moment, or the thing that he looked at the closest, were the finches from the island, okay? What do you notice about the finches? He noticed about them, their, their beaks. Okay, what did he notice about their beaks? He noticed that, um, he noticed that they looked very familiar. They looked in common with finches that were on South America. Um, but he noticed that a lot more different finches were, uh, uh, he noticed that they were similar to finches that were on these Galapagos Islands from island to island. And he noticed that these finches ate different things from island to island. Some ate seeds, some ate nuts, some ate berries, some ate insects, you name it. Uh, but he noticed that the finches had different types of beaks adapted to their food type and food gathering. So um, just to give you an example, the uh, birds with huge meaty beaks that were like huge and thick. We're talking thick like this wide uh, sort of thing. He noticed that they ate some seeds. They eat a lot of seeds and nuts, and then um, birds that have like a pointed beak or a very narrow pointed beak, they were more into eating um, insects, uh, that sort of thing. And he noticed that some of them had like a cupped look to them, <laughs> like this. He noticed that they were more or less eating fruits, uh, that sort of thing. So he came up with this idea that, um, excuse me, um, the beaks adapted, or the finches adapted, to their food source. Okay, um, and I know in that video that uh, he talked about the grants and their finches. So basically, the grants went to Galapagos Islands and they were tagging finches and stuff like that. And they noticed that evolution was basically happening, that uh, there was a huge drought on one of the islands, and a lot of the birds that ate seeds ended up going away because they ended up dying because a lot of the plants died and then there was like this huge flood that ended up having and then all of the beaks changed and then um, the ones that had the seed eating beaks ended up coming back sort of thing um, so just, just justifying the idea of natural selection which we haven't really got into but we're going to um, so basically the beaks 
adapted to the food source depending on which island they were on. Um, Darwin's observations, the thing he noticed were patterns of diversity were seen where unique observations in organism species are not uh, evenly distributed. For example, uh, Australia had kangaroos but no rabbits. Um, South America has llamas, that sort of thing. So um, now keep in mind that here in North America, to give you guys an idea that species are not totally um, distributed evenly, what I mean by that is that, for example, here in North America, we do have a flying squirrel, you know, it kind of puts his arms out and he's got kind of like a webbing going on right there. Uh, and then in, in Australia, there's what they call a sugar glider, which is basically the same thing, but there are unique differences, which leads me to what the video was talking about, how... Um, down in uh, Australia, there were marsupials, basically uh, mammals that gave birth to animals in a pouch. And then when you went further up into New Zealand, you had animals that were living up in trees and what else have you. But there was like this defining line between the two of them. Um, so how does that happen? How did it split up like that to just all of a sudden we got mammals living in trees then all of a sudden we got kangaroos and giving birth to in pouches? How does that happen? Well, basically, it kind of coins the term that these islands were connected at one point, or the Earth was all connected at one point, and then when these things split up, these organisms evolved or changed and adapted to their environment. Uh, so that's why you have this split. So basically, Australia was probably connected to the US, uh, North America at one point, and then once it split up due to uh, volcanic and geological processes, um, we ended up with our species in North America of flying squirrels, and then we ended up with a species of sugar glider out in Australia. We're very similar, but different in the way they do things. Um, what was Darwin observing, and what was some of the things he was collecting? He was collecting things such as fossils, trilobite fossils, um, a giant sloth fossil that you guys saw in the video, um, that sort of thing. We was just, again, he was just collecting. Um, so basically, and he came up with the idea with what Lemaire came up with, or was it? I can't remember what time I had. Came up with this idea that if left unchecked, the number of organisms of each species will increase exponentially, generation to generation. Okay? Now, the idea here is, and again, I'm referring back to this video a lot, so hopefully you guys have been watching it or you finished it. Um, what checks the population of natural organisms? Well, nature does. Um, we're talking about things such as um, food resources, famine, uh, predator, pre predators, um, organisms getting uh, not all the young surviving. So basically, again, I'm referring back to the video. It's a, it's a, it's a, a survival to, it's a battle to survive out there, uh, day in and day out. Um, but again, um, he came up with this observation that no two individuals. He came with this idea that not two, no two individuals were exactly alike among a, a species. And if you don't understand that, we are humans, correct? Are two people exactly alike? I mean, obviously, when you have twins, I mean, even then, they're somewhat different. Okay? So, no two organisms are exactly alike. No two individuals were being exactly alike. Okay? Much of the variation between individuals is inheritable. In other words, they inherit those distinctions between... Uh, mom and dad, obviously. Okay, he does some of the things he came up with, and this kind of gave him a light bulb moment. Uh, he came up with this idea that production of more individuals than can be supported by the environment leads to a struggle for existence among individuals. So that basically that's coming back to what I just said. Nature plays a role in this. Okay, there's a struggle for existence among individuals. Why? Because there's so much in a population. So let's just say that this grassland right here, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Well, let's just say that a grassland can support, I don't know, 10 rabbits, okay? And then you guys all know how rabbits work. There's two rabbits and all of a sudden there's like 20 of them, okay? So let's say a rabbit gives birth to 20 of them, 
and it can only support 10. So eventually what's going to happen is the ones that are better fit to survive are going to, and then the rest will probably die off until you get to that magical number. Okay? Uh, only a fraction of offspring survive each generation from organism to organism. Okay? So most of them die off. Survival of the fittest was the idea. Individuals who inherit characteristics most fit for their environment are likely to leave more offspring. Um, than less fit individuals. So going back to that idea, if you have a island with nothing but fruit and your beak has this cup look to it, you're probably going to survive more than say an organism that has like this beaky point, pointed look that's designed for eating insects. So obviously the cup look is probably going to have more of a greater population than the other one that's eating just strictly insects. Okay, because these the cup look is more fit to survive. Okay. Um, I don't know if I want to keep going or if I want to cut this video here. Uh, I tell you what, we're going to cut it right there. Uh, I get So again, I'm just going to go over this again real quick. Uh, Galapagos Islands, that's where he did most of his research. He was a naturalist. He was looking at finches. He was looking at their beaks, which gave him that aha moment. Um, he came up with this idea that um, in a given environment, um, Nature checks the population, makes sure that it doesn't get out of control. And how does it do that? With famine, um, disease, all that good stuff. Um, and then only the organisms that are best fit to survive in a specific organ uh, environment are going to survive and pass on their, in their traits. And he came up with this idea that no, in no two individuals are exactly the same. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I got for you for right now. Uh, you can expect another video probably later on this week, okay, finishing this up. Uh, so hopefully I can finish up this chapter so I can give you guys your final test on this, possibly the following week, but we'll see. Okay. So until next time, see ya.